and and I will, yeah, I will introduce, um, I'll introduce our, our guest speaker uh, here in just a moment, but just to let everyone know, if you have any questions, please do uh, either unmute yourselves to ask the question or put the questions in the chat. And um, Stephen, uh, he's, Stephen Nguyen is the um, student liaison who's helping with the project today. And he'll be monitoring that chat and he'll let us know, uh, make sure that we answer all those questions. And, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about our presenter. We, I was so lucky to meet uh, Mike. I was so happy that we were put together um, because we were trying to get some commercials made uh, for the rec. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get some videos filmed. And, um, you know, I, I really wanted something that was just exciting and engaging and with good music. And you know, it was hard to find that for, for the, the resources we have. And, uh, you know, we, we um, I wanted to work with him. The second I saw the video, it was actually uh, uh, Jesse Lopez who showed me one of your videos, Mike. And once I saw that, I said, yeah, this is who I want to work with. And, um, and then it took us a while to get through all the paperwork, getting everything set up so that he could be an approved vendor so that he could film videos for uh, any of the colleges at SDCCD. And uh, yeah, once we got that in place, we started to make some videos together and then we all went virtual and we haven't been able to make any videos since. However, uh, we, we are able now very soon to be making some videos for our student founders and the uh, startups at the REC and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But uh, let, me, let me let Mike tell you a little bit about himself and, um, and we'll go from there. It's a really informal lecture today, so go ahead, Mike. All right, well, hey, thank you guys so much. Um, this is a lot less intimidating than me actually being there, so I kind of enjoy it. Uh, um, but, but hey, I, I really appreciate the time, Tanya. I'm super grateful that I get to work with you guys. Um, my background, you know, I think I've always loved video. I, I have three teenage daughters now. Uh, I started young, and so I've been videoing them since they were little, but uh, didn't start to get into actual video production until five years ago. Um, and I started working on little projects here and there. And to not go so far into it, about two and a half years ago, I actually started an LLC, so uh, a video production business, because I saw the massive need in video. I mean, it's video is not going anywhere. It's it's actually increasing. I mean, uh, they said I think it was seventy five percent of users on social media videos. It's going to dominate. Pic pictures are going to be kind of a thing of the past. Um, but I saw such a need. And I thought, you know, hey, let me put myself out there. Let me start the business. Let me see if I can get this rolling. And so two and a half years ago, I actually started We Are Kingdom Productions. And um, so far, as far as what I do, it's been word of mouth. You know, you do a video for one person, just like with Tanya, you know, and somebody saw that video and liked that video. And it kind of just, that's kind of what happens with video because I'm putting it out there to uh some of the biggest platforms in the world. We have the tools like right here, right here on our, our phone. We have like the world at our fingertips. I know it sounds cheesy, but that's kind of what it is. We have everything we need in the sense in our, I mean, we have our camera here, we have social media here, we have an audience, uh, whether it's big or small. So um, I just started taking advantage of uh, the need really that people needed to be in front of people. So, um, but yeah, so I don't know if there's anything else I've been married 18 years, you know, got three yeah. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully you'll get to see the dog again uh, soon. Jack-Jack is adorable. It's such yeah, a yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. So, um, you know, maybe we can start with um, talking about uh, some of the things that, that uh, people can do uh, on, on social media with video. Um, you know, what what kind of what kind of um, things should they be sharing on video, and how long should the videos be, and um, can they make videos themselves that are worth sharing? Oh yeah, I mean, if TikTok, if you guys know what that is, if, if that's not proof that anybody can make a video and become virally a uh, sensation, I don't know what is. But um, yeah, like I said, the the iPhones now. I have an iPhone and. I have, if you go on to We Are Kingdom Productions, my Instagram, I have a gear tab and it shows you everything that I use in my, at, at, at different production shoots that I go to. This is the one camera I pull out. I pull out a lot of the other ones, but this is the one that comes out at every shoot that I do, which basically says, 
I mean, the iPhones are becoming, they might make what I do obsolete one day because it does so much for uh, the consumer. And so uh, as far as videos I do, so I work with, uh, I'll just, for instance, Mossy Toyota, Mossy Ford, Mossy Honda, a car business. Um, I make, I try to make less than a minute videos. Instagram did a lot of research for the consumer. They did a lot of the, they said, people only want a minute. If you go past a minute, they're going to go into a store and it better be pretty compelling if it's going to go past a minute because you're not going to keep your audience. So I would say as far as a length, a minute is great, but it depends on your audience. So if your audience is somebody you're trying to snag into your product, you want to be 30 seconds, 45 seconds, minutes is actually kind of long because you want to snare them quick into what you're doing. But if your audience is, if you're wanting to learn about the new Canon camera that's coming out, you'll sit there for 20 minutes and watch a, a, a video of about a, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you like, you know, Ellen, you know, I'll sit on one, one Ellen show and I continue to watch every Ellen because they're so good. Yeah. So it depends on your audience really, you know, uh, as far as the length. So I do a lot of interview type stuff where um, I'll go back to Mossy Toyota. Most people know what kind of car they want. Most people know uh, generally the idea, but not everybody knows who they're going to buy it from. So what I did down at Mossy is I thought, I, sure, I could highlight the cars. That's great. But I want to highlight the people. I want to tell their story because that's going to make people want to go down and buy it from that person. And so I kind of did that early on with Mossy. I said, well, why don't I start? Let's do a get to know the video about the GM. Let's do a get to know the video about the you know, sales rep, the, this guy, that guy. So then people could go, oh, man, I saw you on social media. And, and then it helps me because it says, you know, oh, this, somebody came to me. And it's happened plenty of times where. Uh, people see my video and they'll go straight to that person, which just kind of proof of concept in a sense. But um, so I like to, I guess, really storytell and uh, social media is not my only uh, area that I, that I build for. And I'll, and I'll tell you guys uh, up front, I'm not the best at like Mark knowing exactly uh, which vein to market in. What I'm good at is building the content to market. So I'm learning about the market world because I just started two years ago and I'm realizing that's a big piece to all of this. If you build something great and you don't know where to put it, you know, it could yeah. flop. So I hired a guy under me that's a social media whiz. So I realized really quick, I'm not good at that, but I'm okay at this. So why don't I get a guy and pay him that's really good at it to help kind of what we're doing. And, and obviously then he becomes an asset to my business. So oh, yeah, um, I was going to say. Yeah. And that's a, one of the things that we do, um, you know, we do at the rec is we do channel testing, right? Channel testing mm -hmm. is where they have the different social media platforms. And we've been going through with all the companies, building out all their social media platforms. And then we start testing those channels and seeing where this totally. response from. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And, and, that, and that's the other beauty, just going back to the original question about like what to use. One, yes, you can use it, but the beauty of Instagram, and I don't share this with everybody because most people know it, but a lot of business guys don't have the time to think about it. It gives you all the activity. Mm -hmm. It tells you who you're reaching, what mm -hmm. age you're reaching, uh, how far, you know, what's your best, yeah, all the analytics. What's, what's the best day to post, uh, when to post, you know, when you have your biggest reach. I mean, it's pretty amazing what Instagram and Facebook have given you uh, as far mm -hmm. as, you know, somebody like me that's just starting out, like, I don't know, I'm just trying to figure out the marketing world too. And here I have, Oh, my best day to post is Thursday at Mossy. Okay, I'm gonna do Thursdays. That's gonna be my big day that I, I, literally center everything around that day, that time. Uh, mm -hmm. But for like personal stuff, you know, it's 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 also the same. But most people on social media have you could actually really easy transfer over to a business account, which I'm sure most of you guys uh, know. It's a it's a pretty basic thing nowadays. But you can go make it a business account and start doing more promotional type stuff, get more analytics. So. A absolutely, absolutely. And you know, uh, so, you know, at the rack here, we're, we're new, we're a startup also, and we've been going through uh, our own social media, uh, building our social media channels. And, and just last night, I was going through the analytics on LinkedIn, right? I was looking at how old are the people? How much money do they make? What do they do for a living? And it, th those are the people who are watching, uh, you know, who are engaging with our posts, and it tells you all about them. So take it totally. advantage tools take advantage of the tools so yeah yes. so we have some yes. questions it looks like uh from the audience and um, maybe maybe we can uh, start by um 
just if you could answer what kind of tools you use for filming your videos and some things that they could do to film videos themselves. Yeah, so um, on my We Are Kingdom page, we have, okay. it's we are, we are Kingdom SD. I don't know if that helps, but I have a gear tab. And the reason I made a gear tab is because that's a big question most businesses want to know. Um, you could be a nice person, nice guy, but if you don't have the equipment, you know, it's, it's almost like if I just have a camera, I'll charge you 200 bucks. But if I have a, uh, all the right gear and the microphones and the lighting and all, it, it, it becomes, all these become an asset to your business, which all end up making you money because the more, not the more stuff you have, the more money you'll make. But if you know how to use the equipment, um, that's definitely uh, becomes an asset. So uh, I use, a, a, I just bought, if anybody knows, I just bought the new Canon EOS uh, R5. It comes out later this month. It shoots in 4K at 120 frames per second, which if you don't know what that means, it just means it's the slow, you could do cinematic slow-mo like never before. It shoots in 8K, which is crazy. I'll probably never use it, but uh, for a while at least, but the fact that it shoots in 8K, it's a mirrorless camera. Uh, but I love Canon. I'm a big Canon guy. I have a Canon 90D right now. I use a lot of GoPros. Every video shoot I go to, and, and Tanya will know this, the first thing I do when I show up on a video site is I get a uh, my GoPro or my DJI action and I clamp it somewhere and I put it on a time lapse. One, it just looks cool because no matter where you go, you're going to get something and it just adds for a little buffer or adds for a little moment. So I usually clamp that on, do a time lapse, and then throughout the day do my thing and come back and get it at the end of the shoot. But um, I have two 360 cams. Uh, I have three GoPros. I have uh, two DSLRs. I have. What about have, what about what about for the non? What about for these non like camera people? Just like the entrepreneurs, yes. who are not going to buy like the, the all the cool toys. What what could they Great use? Great question. Yeah. Great question. The, um, honestly, the new GoPro does really amazing things. It, it could capture wide to narrow um, shoots in 4K. Uh, most of these action cameras do nowadays. But if you're looking to do just like more commercial type stuff, um, I mean, there is gimbals you could buy. What I mean by gimbal is just, it's a, you know, something you put your phone in and it acts as a stabilizer. If you put this in a gimbal, it takes your video quality up 10 levels. If you try to do it with your hand, it's great, but you're gonna be jittery no matter when you walk. But if you put it in a $100 gimbal, DJI Osmo 3, I'll recommend that one because it's amazing. DJI Osmo 3, um, it folds up, it's compact. You could put it in your pocket, literally. But if you pull that out and you put this iPhone or Samsung in and you start doing your shots, it'll take it to another level. And if you're looking to get into any sort of editing, iMovie. Um, if you don't have a Mac, I don't know because I don't have a PC, but I'm sure there's software out there uh, to do some some editing, but iMovie is really intuitive. It's super easy. It's super basic. It lets you do very simple things to very advanced things. Honestly, I used it for the first like five months until I found Final Cut Pro, which is what I use. Just FYI, I use Final Cut. And and honestly, um, you know, iMovie, I, I you can do some pretty professional looking stuff, right? I mean, five totally, months totally. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. You know a Apple's really good at that. That's why a lot of pros went away. Just a fun fact. A lot of pros went away from Final Cut because Apple bought Final Cut and they felt like it was too easy. Like, oh, now everybody's going to be making video. So everybody went over to Premiere. Uh, I jumped on the wagon late. I didn't realize that. So I just stayed with Final Cut and I absolutely love it. It does unbelievable things. So, awesome. so uh, preference. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I see there's a question uh, about from Rohan about um, using uh, Adobe After Effects. Um, and we can get maybe we'll answer that now and then I'll come back to the captioning. So, uh, what do you think about about Adobe After Effects or? Yeah, Adobe After Effects is is absolutely amazing. Um, I, again, I don't I'm not using Premiere and it really works well with the Premiere Adobe Suite. So there's like a whole. To me, to be honest, uh, I I'm solo in my business. I don't have time to really go down every rabbit hole, and Adobe just has. Illustrator, I mean, After Effects, I would say out of any of them, After Effects would be the one to get because um, there's so much you could do. And for somebody like me on Final Cut, I can export whatever I do on uh, After Effects and use it into my fi Final Cut program. So um, I don't have a lot of knowledge 
on After Effects other than a couple of my buddies use it and they do some Maybe. stuff. I'm just like, what in the world? Yeah, incredible. You know, uh, my worth, brother worth is investing actually, in. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I was gonna say my, my brother actually, he has a, a company and they do, um, it's called uh, Action Movie FX and they uh, teach people how to use these. these um, oh yeah. Yeah, so it's really cool. Um, anyways, uh, so more questions. We have a question about um, captioning, captioning. So a lot of the, the uh, you know, people, we need to caption our videos. Uh, if, if you're a teacher, you need to caption your videos. I mean, just anybody, if you want to make it uh, accessible for people with uh, disabilities, you want to make sure to put closed captions. What, is, is there something that you use to do that? I know I have my own preference of what I use, but. Mm. Yeah, I mean, right now, YouTube does it for you, <laughs> exactly. which is amazing. Um, YouTube actually adds captions and it's, and you could actually go in and edit um, if it does it wrong or if it gets it wrong. And so uh, that I would look into that feature. It's actually pretty neat. That's what um, I, I just found it. Yeah, I just found it and I'm like, no way. Uh, for <laughs> me, I like to be very intentional. So my captioning usually is something that's going to be quick and hits and it's more about whatever product. For instance, Mossy, if they got a sale going on in a car, I'm going to show, you know, price. I'm going to show the the keywords that need to be said. Um, but captioning definitely is something more and more that I'm realizing needs to be a part of videos because more clients are asking for it. And it's something I didn't really put a lot of thought into. Uh, but, get, but think about this. A lot of times people are not even listening. They're just going through their phone and now they don't know what it says. If there's narrative, they got nothing. If there's a music that hits on the on every beat, doesn't matter. But if it says, you know, if they're in, you know, in a Zoom meeting, you know, going through, <laughs> going through their phone, then they could read what it says. And it's it's definitely a yeah. I would say it's it's huge. And what I use, I just use Final Cut. There's a text editor in there. iMovie has it as well. There's a text editor in there. You could make it the color. There's like hundreds of fonts to choose from. Super easy. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So you copy you know, and paste. Yeah, I was gonna say, say um, I can show. I'm gonna share my screen for just a moment here. Um, yeah. So I wanted to to say. So is this your? This looks like it's your site here. Can you see my? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. this is, this is an old site, but yeah, this is kind of a. This, to, it kind of gives a little bit of an idea. You want me to go to another one? Oh no, it's fine. I uh, go, I could I could actually show my screen if you want me to show. Yeah, those go videos. ahead. I'll stop the share. I'll stop the share if you want to you want to go ahead and do that. That might that might help. Now I could show. Um, I'll, do you want me to wait to show the product? I'll kind no, of go, show. Go yeah, the only thing we just don't want to show that whole video of the one that we made for the students. But... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you said go to desktop one, right? Yeah, just go to desktop one. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Share. Awesome. Oh, All right. So, auto program. so this yeah. is, yeah. So I just did a video for Miramar. Um, I'll just play the beginning of it if that, I don't know if everybody can hear it or whatnot, but we'll let you know if not, I'll just play the intro. Yeah, that looks clean, bro. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Can't uh, hear. You can't hear it. No. So let me, do I have to hit audio? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I've never, I, I you know, anybody else want to give us a. Yeah. yeah when I mean, you do the screen share and it asks you, um, there's two little options at the bottom that says share, uh, share computer sound. Oh, that's right. You have so, to click that one or else here, it let's... won't. Let's, let's do this. I'm going to stop your sharing and then you're going to yeah, reshare again. So, uh, so if you want okay. to reshare your screen again, uh, there's a little, there, it looks like a, ah, there's an option that says, beautiful. Option, it says share computer Got sound. It. And then click on the optimal Got screen it. share too. And that'll okay, do it. Michelle. Got Sure. She's our resident. Got it. But glad you know what's up. Yeah. She's so awesome. now that should work. Okay. So I'll just go back a tiny bit. So this is, Automotive. Let me know if you hear it yeah. when it comes on. Yeah, I'll let you know. I don't know if this is my Wi-Fi or if it's. It might be. You know, sometimes with Zoom, too much things going San on. San Diego Miramar College, and we're going to go over how to properly diagnose and perform a tire patch on a vehicle.
The best practice for this, there, everybody hear it. Um, let's see here. Stop. Yeah, we can stop hear it. It's pretty or, great. Can it. great. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. So that was that was so that was just something I did for automotive. I tried to make the intro interesting because it. Let's be honest. It's about a tire. <laughs> it's a, right. about you know fixing tires. So I tried to make it where you know somebody's going to actually kind of want to watch it and. Throughout that video, I did a lot of B-roll. Now, B-roll is called background roll. It's it's just, as somebody's talking, it's video that's playing over while they're talking. That's what B-roll stands it. for? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, at least, at least at least that's what somebody told me. Don't quote yeah, me. Yeah, I, I never knew. I, I never knew. Yeah, sorry. Keep background. going. I didn't know. No, that's that's uh, just just a side note. Um, that, uh, that video that you capture to tell your story is, story is so important. So while John was... Uh, he took a tire that had a hole and he put it in a bucket of water to see if it, there was bubbles that would come out. He put soap in there. So what I did is I took a GoPro and I had it inside the water. So when he put the tire in, it took this kind of interesting view because any way I could tell uh, who's watching, if I can make it more interesting, they're going to learn more. They're going to want to stick in and watch, keep watching the video. But if you just have a talking head the whole time, so as you, if you guys are making videos for your business or whatever you are, make sure that background, the B-roll, is something you think about. Uh, storyboards, I do a lot of storyboard type stuff on an iPad because I want to know, as, I'm, as they're talking, what stuff do I want to capture um, in that video? So I, I can't say enough about B-roll. It's really a way to tell a story. And if, if for instance, if you're talking about your dog, uh, you know, it's 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 a video of your dog playing in slow mo. It's like it's stuff like that. Like if you're talking about a certain subject, make sure you get footage of that subject because it just brings the audience in all the more. Um, and then for and I don't know when you want me to show the other video, Tanya. Yeah, but, you, so uh, yeah, let me let me let me preface this by just letting everybody know um, because sure. we do have a lot of we do have a lot of guests here today. So uh, at the Rec Innovation Lab, we have uh, we have right now uh, 20, 23 teams that are starting companies, right? They're starting their companies at the rec. We're helping them. We're providing them with resources like legal and like um, everything, logos and, uh, and videos, right? We're making videos for them so they can promote their businesses. Well, we have, you know, 20 people making videos and, um, and, and Mike's helping them to do that, helping them to do that. Uh, one of the student teams, they actually are, are going to a competition this week uh, because they won some um, regional competition. And so they were hoping to get their video done a little early. And Mike was able to help them to actually do that, get their video done early. Uh, the rest of you who are in the rec will be making your videos um, coming up soon. We'll be doing it different ways. Uh, some of you might want to, um, you know, want to continue to social distance and, and not have Mike film any of it, uh, but just put it all together and that's fine. Um, and then we can go anywhere in between uh, from there. Uh, but let's, uh, with that, I'll let Mike go ahead and show uh, the video and, and talk about whatever you'd like to talk about there. Sure. So I, um, so, so I could just show the video. Oh, oh, just right? the beginning, no, just the beginning, yeah. Okay. Because there's a, a, a rule with their competition. They're not allowed to show the entire video beforehand. That's why we're not showing the whole thing right now. But um, yeah. No worries. So let me, um, so to preface this, and I'll just say it real quick. So uh, if I, I don't know who I'm going to be working with on this particular chat, um, but they sent me all of their footage and they had an, a script, their audio that they wanted to say is about two minutes of audio. And then they sent me pictures and some video and that kind of stuff. And I put it together and then I emailed back to them, hey, I need this, 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 and this. Can you go do this? And I gave them a little bit more direction uh, once I saw what they were trying to communicate. So this was uh, just kind of pulled from there. None of this is anything I filmed. It's just straight from their, uh, I'm assuming their iPhone. So let me just start this here. The 
off-grid charger, or OG charger for short, is a portable charger that keeps your devices charged anytime you don't have access to the power grid, such as when you're camping, fishing, or during a power outage. Every time you so buy an OG charger- go. But that, that gets across kind of what I wanted to do. Let's see, how do I stop the screen share? Here? I can stop, Sorry, I can stop guys. it for you. I'll stop it for you. Oh, right. stop it. The, yeah. the big yeah. red button that says stop share. It says stop. <laughs> you found um, yeah. So that video, uh, again, I wanted to make the intro something that people be engaged by. And I don't know, I, I always, and this is just a, a, a tip, music is so important for your video, whether it's a, an embedded over somebody talking or just trying to tell a story. Think of a, a trailer, a music trailer. I always go to Titanic. I feel like Titanic had the, like an, a magical song that before the movie came out, you, oh, you guys are probably too young. But before the movie came out, you wanted to go see it because the music was so good, which it happens in a lot of movies, right? It's a movie trailer. I look at music maybe differently than most. Some just kind of throw something on there. I take my time with finding the right music for every video because if I don't like that music, I'm not going to be excited about what I'm, it doesn't matter what I'm filming. It doesn't matter if it's a car or a, an interview with a person. The music is what tells the story. So I would really take your time with music and I there's a lot of sites out there I use one that um, it's called Soundstripe it's a monthly uh, cost and I get thousands of songs to cho choose from and I really make sure I have the right song so with that I wanted to make something that people would instantly want to watch so I added some fast movement you know make it like what's gonna happen Who, what is this product and so um, they did their audio themselves and I felt like it was pretty good. You know, for a video guy, I'm like, oh, we could have done this and this, but I was proud of them because when they sent me the original stuff, it was a lot of pictures. So I went and I said, hey, I need, uh, it, they had a picture of the crank for their device. And I said, give me a, a picture of you cranking. I want to see what it does. Like, give me a 360 view of that, of your device. I want to, I wanted way more video, obviously as a video guy. So I sent my, I sent that out to him. Then they had like three different people telling the story. And I said, let's just send, have one person kind of tell the narrative. Um, and so they went out, came back, got me all the stuff I needed. And then we were able to make something really great. A lot of the other stuff too. There's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of like the fit guys fishing in the blackout. I just pulled, I just pulled it from YouTube. There's a lot of sites out there that let you use, you know, they they said camping, you know, right when they said camping, I wanted to make sure I had a picture of them camping. Right when they said, you know, blackout, I wanted to make sure I had a picture because now when somebody sees it, it draws you more into that story rather than just hearing it. So I'm always trying to think of when somebody's telling a story, what what do I need to put over that moment? And I didn't have any, normally I have them, I would have them talk and you see them because I think it's important to see the person behind yeah. the product. Yes. Uh, I really do. I think I think that brings a lot of value because you'll see their passion, your passion behind whatever you're filming, whether it's something silly or whether it's something for business, people want to see you excited about whatever that may be. So um, I would have definitely had them in it. And then, um, uh, but, but they just sent me the audio, which is fine. They needed it quick and stuff. And I felt like we were able to pull it together. So. Yeah. Sometimes we know as entrepreneurs, perfection is the enemy of progress. <laughs> and so, so we, we just, uh, we're, we're happy when things get done we're just trying to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So, um, that, yeah, that's awesome. You know, it's funny when you say about the music, the reason why I wanted to work with you was the music. I was so sick of watching these videos with this just uh, awful, some bad ones. So bad. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, wow, this guy actually has some good music in here. <laughs> I watched this and it was just some promo video for, I don't even remember what it was for, but I was like, that's good music in a promo video for, yeah, so that was, was really cool. So it is important, it is important. Um, so I, uh, I wanted to also uh, ask a lot of these entrepreneurs here, uh, we're, we're bootstrapping it, right? We're, we're kind of broke. Huh? So um, any, um, any recommendations for maybe not cheap, but free music sites? <laughs> Oh, um, yes, there is there. I, I mean, all you have to do is put in a Google search of uh, royalty, type in royalty free music. Mm -hmm. the, and you'll find some good stuff. It, it's, it's, you know, obviously I do this full time since so my job. So I'm going to have something I pay for monthly. But 
there's definitely a ton of royalty free songs out there. Most of you guys probably know if you put a Justin Bieber song on your video and you put it on Instagram, they'll either remove it mm. or take it out. Um, a lot of times like TikTok and these sites have their own music that you could use. So uh, that works. But for the most part, if you're putting together something for your business, I would, uh, I would even pay for the right song. So there's a site called Premium Beats, premiumbeats.com. There's a lot of these. But one that I used was premiumbeats.com and it's 50 bucks. I know that's a lot, but if it's your business, your product, you want to make sure that, cause that's gonna be your branding now. That song is gonna be probably telling the story through many videos, maybe not just one, but, um, but there's plenty of royalty free songs out there that you can choose from. Cool, cool, thank you. So I saw there was a technical question in here and I'm guessing it was from one of our tech. Oh boy. Yes, it was from Vivek, technical. He wants to know uh, the frame rate. What frame rate video needs to be shot for uh, for a VR application? Is 120 or is it 60 as most are 30? I don't know exactly what that means, but maybe you do. Yeah, so <clears throat> forever uh, I shot in 60 frames per second. So if this makes any sense, um, what 60 frames per second does over a 24, 25 or 30 it gives you, think about it as it gives you more pictures to work with. So if you're trying to put, if you put slow-mo on a 30 frame, it's going to feel choppy because you only have 30 pictures to, to make it feel smooth. But imagine doubling that. Now you have 60 pictures to make the cinematic really slow. So now you have 60 pictures to choose from. Um, I, a reason I did almost everything in 60 frames, because a lot of times, even in interviews, sometimes a laugh, some one of the clients laughing i would take that laugh put it in slow-mo and put it at the end of actually i think i did it with you tanya and put it at the end of the video as a b-roll type fun either yeah. beginning or ending clip um so i sh i shoot in 60 frames a lot but i'm finding now that i'm shooting in 4k uh 30 frames but for vr i know vr is a different thing i i believe the 360s 30 frames um like my 360 cams shoot in 5k at 30 frames per second it also uh -huh. shoots in 24. Um, as far as super technical qu questions, I don't always know what's best, but um, I'm getting into a lot. I love VR. I'm a big VR nerd. Uh, not making it, but playing in it. Um, but I've started to really work with a lot of 360 cams and trying to find the functionality of how can I use this for business because it's amazing what they could do. And on my We Are Kingdom SD page on Instagram, you'll see some of my VR I mean, my uh, 360 shots, they're just crazy. It's crazy yeah. what they could do. So, so awesome. And, you know, we have a lot of, um, a lot of uh, students who are starting companies, uh, taking advantage uh, of VR, and then some that are just realizing, hey, you know, this is kind of a new cool tool that we could use somehow to promote our businesses or to, you know, or to just kind of show people something new. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, oh well, Rohan, I will, yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I, I'll say VR, definitely, I see it becoming, I, I would love to see it become more of a, think about putting everybody getting a, just a, their phone, putting it in a VR helmet and going to walk through a house that you want to buy. You know, I mean, the capabilities of VR, Huge. I think somebody needs to keep, like, well, kind of moving with that needle because it's big. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, and that's, that's what we're, one of the things that we're doing he here at the REC is, you know, we're trying to get people to think about these big, nascent um, trends. And yeah. you know, the kind of things you want to start businesses, um, you know, Absolutely. On, the, on the forefront. And, yeah, and if you, you, you can always come in too and start another business, I don't know, at the rec. Um, so we have a question <laughs> from, uh, from Rohan here. He wanted to know about, um, oh, what your 360 camera is. I think you already said uh, you use GoPro for your 360 cam. Which one particularly? So my favorite 360 cam and you'll probably, if you Google search it, you're going to find this one. It's called Insta 361 R. And the coolest thing about this 360 cam, it's like a Lego. You could literally undo it and put a, um, a wide angle camera and kind of like a Lego, put it in. And now you have an, uh, an action cam and then undo that and put your 360 module in. And now you have a 360 cam. It also has a one sensor, I think, uh, a module as well. But it, it over the, cause I also have the GoPro Max and the Insta360 is by far the app that comes with it, the functionality of it, amazing, amazing. Awesome. It's the best. 
so and um, Ray from uh, TCXR, another a company that's doing some virtual reality stuff here at the Rec, wanted to know um, where are your 360 shots? He wants to look at um, some 360 shots for health stuff or some other things that you've done. Yeah, so um, on my we it's we are Kingdom SD like San Diego we are Kingdom SD uh, on Instagram. Um, I have four. I have a couple videos though. There's a there's a night one and uh, there's a one that I did at the beach that has some 360 shots. Actually, there's a few on there. So if you just kind of scour through my Instagram, you'll find some of my 360 shots. I'm trying to figure out how to utilize it for business because right now it's kind of for fun and it's been uh oh there you go so this one uh the the right there with the circle you'll see if you click on that yep i did this at the beach and the app really did a lot of the i did the editing but the app really did a lot for me. you guys hear that can you hear it yep yep The craziest th the thing about the 360 cam that always baffles me, if you have a selfie stick and because the angle of the camera, it makes the stick disappear. So mm -hmm. I have electric skateboard and I can hold it behind me and it looks like a drone's following me. I mean, it's pretty. So that's why I'm trying to figure out more ways to utilize that because YouTube right now allows you to take, for instance, uh, for the VR guys and even just 360 in general, YouTube has the metadata for 360 uh, mm -hmm. videos. So you can upload a 360 video. Like I did a video on my YouTube uh, of downtown Disney. I just had the 360 cam. I held it up. And if you go on YouTube, you could actually take your finger or your cursor and just look around Disneyland um, straight on YouTube app. You don't have to have a special app. You don't have to have a special you know, phone. You could literally go on and look. So the only time I've used that is there was a company that needed this. Um, uh, it was a community that had like a community house and they had it rented out all the time and people always wondered what it looked like. So I stuck a 360 cam in the middle, set it there for a minute and then put it on YouTube. So now they can go around and see how big it is, what it looks like just by using their finger. It's kind of cool. That is so cool. I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try it. You know, I have a 360 camera. I don't know. Play with it. There, there you go. Some, there you yeah, go. There's pretty cool things you can do. So I see a couple of hands up. People uh, had some questions. And um, so uh, it's hard for me to see. Uh, Steven, can you tell me exactly who's asking questions there? Uh, VC had a question. And I also had some questions from the chat earlier that we didn't go over. Okay, so go ahead and uh, if you want to let us know. Oh, uh, Okay, so the first one was, are there any tips and tricks for making a video look good over Zoom? Like sharing uh, a video over Zoom since we are... Um, uh, I see what he's saying. So, so uh, that might not, I don't know if Mike, you, you use Zoom a lot, but um, I, know, <laughs> firstly, I do use Zoom a lot and I can tell you some of my tricks. And uh, there's actually a, a way that you can go into your settings in Zoom and adjust the settings. So, and I haven't done it on this, com on this computer. So you can see how, you know, the lighting isn't great. And, um, you know, it's kind of a harsh angles. You can adjust those settings so it softens everything up and uh, they're right there in, it's right there in Zoom. So it tells you how to do it. Um, and then there are also a, a other number of things that you can do like putting your camera above you rather than, you know, below you and things like that. Just look a little better on Zoom. I don't know. Anything else you can think of, Mike? 
Uh, you know, I'm ra- it's crazy, but I'm rarely on Zoom. So it's, uh, I have zero input. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. That's okay. So, um, and then uh, for the participants raising their hand, I know, uh, so the first hand raising was, uh, was Vivek. Uh, did you have a question or was yours already addressed? And we might have lost Vivek there. Addressed. Okay, wonderful. And then Rohan, you had a question? Or was yours already addressed? There was one more in the chat um, that I'll ask. Uh, how many content videos should you post in a week from Charlie's? So as far as like a personal Instagram or is this like I, for your business? I think, I don't know if she can speak on here, but I know that, uh, she, I think she's asking about business uh, to promote her, her new company. Okay. so. Instagram is really difficult with their algorithms and stuff. It's just, you could post three times a day and some people only see one. Some people won't see any. It's, um, it's changing constantly. I, I don't know why. I don't know. I think people are trying to figure it out. And it's, it's one of those mo- sliding scale, moving everywhere kind of things. But um, honestly, my opinion is always like, if you have it, post, talk about it tell people stories stories are huge i will say stories are huge on social media because again instagram did the the work for us right they uh posts are great but i could tell you people like my wife she'll only go through stories i don't even know if she watches posts anymore a lot of people don't because stories are easy you get you get more of the the person rather than a post about like hey for 5.99 you can have this nobody wants to see that on story a story they want to see you they want to see what's behind their product they want to see you talking about it. they want to see you sharing about it they you know nothing lengthy but just something short and sweet maybe something telling people that's why it's called story right uh they want to hear the story behind it right and so that, and that's um, true for everything i'm oh, sorry i didn't mean to interrupt but isn't that true okay. for all the videos that they should be doing shouldn't they be sharing stories that are like yep. human interest kind of things everything to me is a story i, I i'm a i like think of myself as a storyteller because it's it doesn't matter if it's a car or a dog or whatever it is I want to tell the story of whatever my subject is and the more you could tell about that story the more people are going to understand what it is um, what it does you know get a feel for it um, especially on different angles of how to shoot it but which can always come later sometimes though I'm telling you stories are cool because it's more of like the real stuff just going on you know there's a lot of products out there that you could post. And I would say at least once a day, um, because two out of the five or six or seven that you post may be seen, but stories, uh, a lot of people see more stories than they do post in my, in my opinion, I could be totally wrong, but I, I really believe that to be true. So we're starting to build more stories, even at, uh, Mossy, you know, just a little bit behind, I do behind the scenes at Mossy. So if I'm down there, I might as well capture it. You know, if you have a product that you're trying to sell, share little bits about it and doesn't and repeat stuff doesn't matter on stories because guess what it disappears so you could tell the same stories the next day and you know get a whole new group of uh, people watching those stories so um stories are really big i can't stress that enough and i should have mentioned that, that early on uh, i'm starting to learn the social media realm like i said i'm more of the content creator i build the stuff i'm just now starting to dive into the whole social world and how it works and it's complicated it's complicated so Right, but but I mean, even though it's complicated, wouldn't you say that um, it's also, I feel like it's also something that's manageable. Like you can get in there and do oh, things yeah. and it doesn't matter if you mess up a little bit. I mean- Yeah, more of the algorithms is complicated. Social media at hand is like amazing. Like in my opinion, for any business owner, it's like I always tell, this is, I, my sales pitch to every business is, if you're not online, you don't exist. That's what I tell them. Exactly. This is the new TV. I mean, literally, like, get your butt on social media. You can manage it. Let me build the stuff for you. You can manage it. So um, that's definitely, you're, you're absolutely true. Honestly, absolutely. It's more of the, the inside of the algorithms and how they all work. It's like, I don't know if anybody totally knows. Right. But You know, honestly, <laughs> I, I always feel like nowadays, we are on an even playing field almost with huge companies. Uh, you know, because of social media, we don't have to have a, a huge budget, uh, um, you know, to get on uh, television for a, a commercial. You know, this is the age of the entrepreneur. 
And a lot of the reason is, is because of social media. You make a video and you make that video look good and uh, you put it, you know, you put it out there and not even that good, right? People like a little bit of, uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of, of rough and a little bit of like real. And, and uh, yeah. I, that, that's a, that's kind of a good point. And that's why stories are important because people, the, the polished thing is great, but sometimes just the raw and real person telling about, you know, the product is, uh, you know, I have teenage daughters. So like, or my wife with makeup and stuff like they rather hear the person just tell them about it rather than seeing this whole, like, you know, post on it, you know, but um, I don't think it devalues doing that. I think definitely still you want to capture what your product is and have that. But um, I really think storytelling and just ma not making, not feeling like it has to be perfect and has to, you know, cause like I said, a story goes away in 24 hours, it's gone, you know? So, and you could always delete it if you hate it, but for the most part, I think right. stories are, are very vital and, and don't have to be perfect. They could be audio from your phone. They don't have to, you know, I, I hook everybody up with the lapel mic that I do videos for. So the audio is really nice and stuff. People don't care on stories uh, when you're, when you're talking to them. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, um, you know, we're, we're almost out of time here where I don't want to, I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but um, I do want to make sure that we have a chance just quickly, um, you know, for the, uh, for this, for the entrepreneurs who are going to be filming videos uh, with you, um, what can you do to tell them or what can they do to prepare for, uh, for doing the videos, you know, the little one minute videos with you? What kind of things should they do? Should they be writing out a, a, a storyline or should they be thinking about what they want to say? Or, you know, what should they do? Yeah, uh, storyboard. Uh, it's, it's, it's vital to you. You want to know what you want to communicate about your product. What are the, and you want to make it simple. You know, that I will say about the guys that sent me uh, all the pictures and video and they they made it two minutes. I was like, that's it. You don't go past two minutes. <laughs> um, One is better. Unless yeah. like, yeah, unless, like I said, unless you're, you're wanting to look at a product that you're interested in, like a Canon or the new iPhone, you'll sit there for whatever, five minutes. But for these type of videos about a new product coming out, two minutes or less would be great. Um, as you're thinking about your storyboard, think about what visuals you want to capture over that. So if you're talking about, for instance, they were talking about their little uh, charger, you know, as they're talking about it does this, it does that. I told them, go back and I want to see it do those things. You know, don't, don't just tell me it does it. I want to actually see that your product is doing what you're saying it's doing. Um, so if you have to have a model, whatever it ends up being, if you have to have actors, if you have to have somebody that, you know, I wouldn't say actors, you don't need that. But for the most part, know what you want visually to capture, but at least get your script out. Because once you have this script, then you could go back through it and go, oh, I said turtles here, huh? Or I said camping, you know, and I said fishing. Okay, I should get a, you know, something fishing there. Um, some of those I could work with, you know, I could help you with. I am 100% accessible to you guys. If you, if I'm working with you, please feel free to call me and ask and talk. I'll talk you through it and I could even help you along the way. But I would at least have a storyboard written out. Um, think about, you could write in like, okay, I need to get pictures of me hiking up a mountain. Okay, here. Okay, I talk about the sun shining, you know, what, okay, I need to get a bit picture of the sun shining. And I, and like I said, I could even help get some of those, you know? So if you're like, I don't really know, I don't know if I can go film me doing this, or I need an off-road vehicle. I, I don't, I could get through that, you know? So some of the stuff I could help you with, but to, to be kind of prepared for it, have a storyboard. You don't have to draw it all up, just a script. Think of it as a script, a two minute script, and then go through that script and get another color pen and write down visuals that you want to put as B-roll. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. We'll make sure to all have our storyboards before we re reach out to you. And I know some of you do need to take off for your for your four p.m.s, and that's okay. Uh, you're, you're welcome to run. I, uh, you know, appreciate you coming. But uh, just wanted to get just quickly. I know Sophia had a question that she uh, wanted to ask, and uh, Sophia, if you can uh, maybe, maybe just a quick question for for yeah. uh, make there. Yeah, so um, I'll make it as brief as I can. But um, so I, I have a real estate app launching here shortly this month. And basically, there's different types of users. And so it's not like something I could like go film. And we're basically needing to do like instructional videos and like tutorials of, hey, this is how we use the app for each different type of user. Um, and so I just don't know like how to go about doing that. I mean, I'm getting like super pricey quotes and so it's just like if i could figure it out myself that'd be even better 
um because it's like kind of like screen recording you know but also like pinpointing like, gotcha. hey, this for this and do you have the so the apps all are already done yeah we're just testing it right now okay so i mean what i would do is, is i would film with me and i could film a really sharp picture of the app as you guys navigate through so it. She's so not in the, she's actually, she's an entrepreneurship student, but she's not in the rec. Yeah, I'm not in the rec. She's not in the rec. Oh, I mean, okay. I'll pay you to help me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we could do that too. And then, yeah, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be too expensive at all. But what cool. I would do is have a nice camera over the shoulder as you're, as you, the, you know, person that has the app is using it because you know about it. You'll be able to share about it. The picture will be nice and clean. We could always brighten it up so people could see it. Um, awesome. There is a lot of like other, yeah, there's other stuff that you could do, but it is going to get pretty pricey as far as, right. you know, visuals. Uh, so would you be so kind to put your email in the chat so I could email you? I was, was going to say, just uh, uh, send absolutely. me a message to Sophie and I can also, I'll, I'll connect you guys. I'll connect you. I'll yeah. Facilitate. Yeah. Yeah. So um, awesome. Uh, there was other... Uh, so uh, people were asking about once they finish their storyboards, when can they get the, um, you know, when they can start getting working with, with, with you, Mike? Uh, this is for the rec students, for the, for the ones who are in the program. Yeah, it, I'm ready. Like, let's rock and roll. So I, I think um, they could reach out to me as soon as they are ready. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, do, I'm yeah, sure we'll it's going to be different for everybody. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, um, I could do a lot of the coordination, Tanya, as far as if they want to film with me or if they just need me to kind of walk them through it. Um, I'm open. So awesome. awesome. Cool. So um, is there anything that, uh, you know, anything that you wanted to uh, may maybe leave the, the audience with? I I'll let you kind of anything you want to share here at the end. And then we might have time afterwards for a couple little questions and I'll stick around too. But anything you want to share at the end with everyone? Um, yeah, I tell you, video is, is not going away. It's, it's, it's a, it's an amazing way, especially now with iPhones getting better and better. The cameras are getting better. They're allowing you to do so much more. And sometimes it's very simple just to know how to use the phone where, you know, there's actually a settings to know you could actually do it 4k and 60 frames per second on this phone. Kind of what I've been talking about. Um, same with Samsung. So I, you know, I, I love this world of video. I think it's so highly important of storytelling nowadays. I mean, social media kind of proves it. It's it's what everybody's wanting. You know, eighty. I think it was like eighty-seven percent of consumers like are, are watching videos. On, I mean, it's crazy. The the statistics are unbelievable as far as video over pictures or really anything else. And this is the new TV. There you go. That that's the last thing I'll leave you. All right. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. So thank you again, uh, Mike, so much for being here. Um, I'm just so glad we get to work together again. And um, Me I just, too. I Me too. See these videos. I'm so excited. Yeah. Um, I, I, look forward, I look forward to working with everybody, honestly. So I, I'm, I'm excited to, to meet you all. And, you know, I'm going to also put in the, if any of you here are not in the rec and, and you do want to work with, with Mike, I will put his contact information in there as well so you can reach out to him. And, um, you know, really reasonable and the kind of videos he makes are just amazing. You've seen them. They're amazing. Amazing. And I heard, was somebody trying to jump in and say, say one other thing before we end? Was that it was no, me. Yeah. I feel like our... Um our presentations that are most exciting is when people forget about the feedback form. <laughs> and I know we've all been talking about technology and videos and everyone's, um, yeah, now has their brain on that. But if you all could please fill out the feedback form, let Mike know how much you appreciate him and his time. And then um, if we could get feedback as well um, for the workshops that we're doing. Thank you all. Thank you, Lena. Okay. And yeah. Now and I was just going to say thank you for this amazing workshop. I think, I think what you said about the phone and everyone having their attention on the phone and the, the these getting so much better. I think that's a very great point. Um, and I was, if you don't mind, I was just going to take a screenshot of the. Of the oh yeah, take a screenshot of everyone. Okay, everybody, yeah, I'll, I'll just do that. turn on your cameras, everybody. We're going to do a screenshot. We're going to do a screenshot. Uh, All right. Yeah. So. Uh, everybody, as soon as we can get everybody in here smiling, let's see your smiling faces. Wow, look at everybody. Awesome. And, yeah. And I we got, got mine. Three. And, and putting me on the spot, bro. And, <laughs> and finally. For everybody. Uh, we can do one more. We can do one more. One more. And let's have it kind of goofy. One, two, three. <laughs> 
Great. Awesome, everyone. Thank um, you so much. Can Mike, great. quickly you put his email in the chat before we close the chat. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much.